Welcome to part 4 of the training, in which we will cover the functionality of TACAM and of the ILS. We will use both of these instruments to safely land our jet in Batumi Airport. Please enable the autopilot and maintain current speed and heading. The TACAN ILS controls are located on the right panel beneath the ECM. TACAN stands for Tactical Air Navigation System and provides you with bearing and distance to a ground or airborne station. ILS, or Instrument Landing System, will enable you to land in very low or even zero visibility by providing horizontal and vertical guidance just before and during landing. First, you have to make sure that both of these instruments are set to ON. To enable your TACAM, you have to set the mode selector to desired setting. For ground station, you will want to put it in the TR mode. For airborne station, most commonly your tanker, you will have to switch it into AA mode. Go ahead and make sure that your TACAM is in TR mode. Press spacebar when ready to continue. Good. Now you should set the correct TACAN channel to start communicating with Batumi Station, 16X. Make sure that the band selector is set to X and use the frequency selector knobs to dial in 16. You should hear a Morse code signal informing you that you are tuned to the correct frequency. If you don't hear it, use the volume panel on your left console to increase the TACAN volume. Press spacebar when ready to proceed. onto the ILS. Even though it won't catch the signal from our current distance, you need to set it up way in advance. Make sure your ILS is set to ON. Press spacebar when ready to proceed. Now select the correct frequency using both knobs. For Batumi, you should dial in 110.30 MHz. Also, bear in mind that on this particular airport, the ILS only works for runway 13 for which the magnetic heading is 119 degrees. It is worse to note this down, so let me repeat. 119 degrees. Press the spacebar when ready to proceed. Now it is time to contact the tower and inform them that you are beginning your approach. Batumi is on channel 1 of your green video. The tower will provide you with the best heading to get around with the runway. So change your course according to instructions. Press space bar and ready to On your HSI, select the TACAN mode. You will note that the double arrow will point you towards the Batumi TACAN station and give you the slant range. You will remember that the runway 13 heading is 119 degrees. Wait for the arrow to get to around 121 degrees and then start your turn towards the airfield. You should now be at the correct path for Batumi. Descend to 3000 feet and keep that altitude. Also, constantly monitor your speed which should not exceed 280 IAS at this stage. It is time to set up your plane for approach. First, select waypoint 2 which corresponds to Batumi on your flight plan or if you are not landing at the airport, which is part of a flight plan, introduce the airport information into the ILS. Next, on your PCA, press the APP button, which will put you in the approach mode. It will enable the display of ILS queues on your HUD, 
and will also let you see the synthetic convoy symbol, which will show up when you are less than uh, 10 miles from the airport, and if you have entered the heading and glide slope of the runway into your INS. You may want to raise your seat to increase your field of view. Also, make sure that your radar altimeter is on. It is not that crucial for this landing, as we are currently over water, but over the land it will make a difference. You can see a dashed line extending from the center of your horizon line, which is pointing either to the left or to the right. This shows your deviation from the runway threshold, so it is a good time to correct your heading. If the line points to the left, you should gently turn left and wait for it to move towards the center of the hub. In other words, you need to fly directly above it and follow it up to the runway. Remember to return to the correct heading once you set the localizer line, in this case 119 degrees. Apart from the localizer line, you can see a box, which is your glide slope indicator. You want to keep your flight path marker in the box and keep the box over the dashed line during the landing. Once you get within 10 miles from the airport, you will see the synthetic runway which will further help correct your approach. Remember that you can get the same readings by looking at your course and glide slope deviation needles on your ADI. As you close to the runway threshold, place your flight path marker on the closer edge of the runway. Also try to keep the two acceleration vector chevrons level with the runway threshold. You will notice two vertical bars slowly coming up on both sides. This is your angle of attack indicator. During landing, you will want to keep the vector chevrons between the AOA lines, which will give you a 14 degree angle of attack. Perfect for landing. Don't forget to extend your landing gear. From this moment, try not to use the stick, but instead regulate your angle of attack by increasing or decreasing speed, which should be between 130-160 knots indicated. Whenever the chevrons go down on the AOA lines, increase the speed. If they get too high, reduce it. Keep your flight pass marker on the one one. Request landing. Well done, you have landed. Taxi to the parking spot. This concludes this part of uh, training.